Hello YouTube, Sam here from youtube.com slash onlivegamer and welcome to your 12th Microsoft Visual C Sharp 2010 Express tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to start learning loops. Now, we're going to start off with the for loop. Now, when I first learned the for loop, it was uh, actually pretty hard for me to grasp the, um, the concept of it. So, I completely understand if you guys have some trouble and um, ask some questions in the comments. So, here you can see uh, the code that we have from last time. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. So basically what a for loop does is it takes a block of code and it will run that a certain amount of times based on what you say, like how many times you want it to run. So let's go ahead and create a simple for loop. So to start off, we're just going to use the keyword for. Now it says code snippet for for loop. So let's go ahead and put parentheses here. And now inside of these parentheses, this is where we're going to tell it uh, how many times we want it to run. So we're going to declare a variable. We'll just call it um, s. So int s is going to be equal to zero. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using s to count. And once s reaches a certain value, it's going to go ahead and exit the for loop. So we've created s and set it equal to zero. So how many times do we want to do the for loop? Well, we want to run through this code every as long as s is, let's say, less than or equal to, that's a conditional operator, as long as it's less than or equal to, let's say, 20. So it's going to go 0 to 20. So it's actually going to run this code 21 times because if you start at 0, go 0, 1, 2, 3, count all the way up to 20, you're actually going to get um, 21 um, total numbers. So as if s is less than or equal to 20, then go ahead and run this code again. And now each time the code runs, we want to go ahead and increment s. Now you may remember this from my simple math. I don't know if I added that in there or not, but a shorthand for adding one to a variable is just doing plus plus. So instead of saying s um, equals s plus one, we just do s plus plus to get it to add one each time this loop iterates. So now we need to create our curly braces and specify which code to run um, for the duration of this for loop. So we're going to type console.writeline and we'll just do hello world. Go ahead and close this. And let's go ahead and run it and see what happens and then we'll come back and explain it. So you can see here that it printed out hello world 21 times. So when the code runs, it's going to run this right here, and so s is equal to 0. So when it runs this right here, s is equal to 0. And then it comes back up to the top, and it's saying, oh, look, here's s++, plus plus, so we're going to add 1 to s. s is now equal to 1, and because s is equal to 1, it's also less than or equal to 20. So it does that over and over and over again um, until s is um, 21 or greater than, or I think, yeah, greater than 20, until s is greater than 20, um, once it's equal to 21, it's going to go ahead and exit the loop and come to this console.read line right here. So now that we've done this, let's go ahead and print out um, the variable s. Now we can do this by typing console.write line, and we'll just say loop iteration, and now what we need to do is we need to combine um, two strings into this right line. So we're just going to do that by using the plus. Let's go ahead and leave a space here. So there's going to be a space in between loop iteration and our variable. We can even go ahead and add a colon. So now we're going to take s. And let's go ahead and just convert that to a string. So what we've done here is we've taken the literal string loop iteration. Now a literal string, I've said this before, but if you may not remember it. It's basically a string that's used once and it's not saved after that. It's not saved in a variable, it's not saved as anything. It's a literal string. And then we use this plus operator right here, which basically concatenates two strings or adds two strings together. So we're going to be adding the variable s. And because s is of data type int, we need to convert that to a string before it can be concatenated with loop iteration. So we just use the dot to string. Um, that's available for integer types and a bunch of other things. 
So each time this loop runs, s is going to be equal to one more than it was before. So the first iteration is going to say loop iteration zero, and it's going to say one, and it's going to go all the way up through 20. So let's go ahead and run this and see what kind of results we get. So you can see here, we've got loop iteration 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 20. So go ahead and look at this code. If you don't understand it, you can leave a comment. I'll try to answer it if I can. Um, but play around with it. Play around with your variable s. See what you can do with it inside the loop. See what you can manipulate um, throughout the loop by changing it through each iteration and doing stuff that you want to do and thinking about what a programmer would use a loop for and why would they would want to run something over and over and over again. So once you're used to for loops and you've got the basics of them down, go ahead and move on to the next tutorial.